Hello, friends. Welcome Hello. to the Behind the Gate podcast with me, Bryce Rankowitz, AJ's go-to guy, and AJ, the cat, cat and zero. What's up, pal? What's going on, man? Nice and sick today. Nice. So, everybody, we recorded last night with SGB Racing and the Collective Experience, Dave Drake's fun episode. We've talked a lot about what's in store for Straight Rhythm. Uh, the upcoming Pastrana Land trip that'll be happening this Sunday, and we're super excited. Um, before we get into the episode, though, we definitely wanted to give a couple shout-outs. First, David, the Collective Experience, who has an awesome program um, coming up this season. We wanted to just give him the love that he deserves. So check out the Collective Experience. You can find him on Instagram at the Collective X uh, or Collective EXP. Um, I'm sorry, collectivexp.com. He has, if you guys don't know, Collective Experience is a really immersive experience that goes behind the scenes with all your favorite riders in the Supercross uh, season and Motocross season. Uh, get plugged into the sport, connections and opportunities that really you've, you've only dreamt of. And it's, it's available to anybody who's interested in getting a behind the scenes look at the sport, uh, be influential. Um, in race days, decision making, be really part of the team for a day or for however long you want to do it. I mean, it's it's a really unique opportunity. He's been involved with AJ's program for a long time. A lot of people have either gone on from his program to work in the industry or just had a, an experience that's worth its weight in gold and, and will last a lifetime. So uh, we're, there's an opportunity to become uh, either an intern or have a behind the scenes look at what's coming up from Pastrana land. So go check out all of that. We have a promo code for you guys. Uh, it is behind the gate 19 gets you 20% off any experience with AJ. Uh, so whether it's this upcoming Pastrana land um, behind the scenes, exclusive content or an actual full on internship for this upcoming Supercross season, go check it out. You get 20% off using the code behind the gate 19 AJ. Very nice. Uh, Bryce, <clears throat> You're shall up. I talk about SGB? <clears throat> <clears throat> wow, man, I'm really struggling over here. So Dave sent us this nice um, couple paragraph thing, made our life easy. And when we asked Jason what specifically he wanted, uh, quote unquote, he wrote, can you just say some cool shit? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> so... Jason SGV is, first of all, a very cool guy. I mean, very, like the hardest working person in the sport I've I've seen in a while. I have to tell the guy to sleep, tell the guy to go take a nap. Um, the cool thing about SGV is when you send it, when you send your suspension in, you know Jason is working on it. It's not like when you send it to other big companies, you're just going to get some Joe Schmo tech that, may or may not know what he's doing. It's the same problem when you go to a dealership. You have a guy that's not totally vested in your suspension or your bike working on your stuff, and you never want that. Um, another big thing that Jason does is the coatings, which everyone wants to look cool. The coatings are pretty unreal. Uh, not just the lowers, but he does full uppers as well. <clears throat> pretty much any color you want. Um, for our straight rhythm bikes, uh, I don't even know. Actually, he's surprising me, so I don't know what color mine are. But they're going to look cool. He's got the two other KTM ones, the David Pingree bike and the Grant Langston bike. Those are going to be full coated as well. Pretty darn awesome. Uh, check him out at, I don't have his stuff, but it's SGB underscore racing on Instagram. And then his, what's his website, Bryce? Do you know? SGB-racing.com. So give him a call. Get your suspension done. If on dirt bike, the first thing I do is suspension don't waste your money on getting a cool exhaust that's not going to help you get get your suspension done get it set to your weight and it, it'll change your life on the bike and i apologize that probably nobody can even understand what i'm saying because i'm sick my nose is running right into my mic um <laughs> you i'm trying fine. to do laundry i have four socks i'm doing laundry as i speak right now i have four freaking rogue socks it'll a load of laundry where I only did eight pairs. So half of my eight pairs have gone missing. Yeah. Nice. Bear Adam. Bad, bad <laughs> well, way to start the day. Thank you to 
Dave and Jason for coming on the episode. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. We got off to a, a weird start because before we started recording, we were all fooling around, goofing around, and we all totally lost our trains of thought when it started to get serious. But uh, listen, uh, we talk all about straight rhythm, the bike plans, the plans for Travis's house, uh, and a lot more. We got into fitness again. We answered some fan questions. So it was actually a really good time, and we look forward to uh, you hearing it. So without further ado, take it away, AJ. Take it away, AJ. What do I do now? Oh, don't you don't you have a cool like sign off catchphrase thing you're working on this season? No. Oh, <laughs> oh do I oh. put you on the spot there? Would I have to come up with a song? <laughs> yeah. Where's our I theme was gonna song? come. I was gonna sing a theme song at the beginning of each episode from now on. Yeah, you I just. Yeah, yeah no, I'll, have, I'll have Mikey C produce it for me. All right, well, let's let these people listen <clears throat> to this episode. Get well soon. Okie dokie. Toodles. Enjoy, guys. Oh, say hey, boys. Can you see? Hey. This beautiful voice ringing us in. How you doing, fellas? How's it going, guys? <laughs> oh, yeah, don't, don't, don't I, speak up at once. I thought they weren't going to say anything. I'm I like, was like, what no are way. we going? What? I thought we were already running into technical issues. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. What a, what a well, what's up, guys? Hey, Dave. <laughs> what's up, Jason? <laughs> How's it going? Hey, Jerry, are you off your meds? <laughs> oh... Do you take an yeah, edible before this episode or what? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm sick, calling water. I, I'm never having an edible again. I, I overdosed last time. <laughs> I overdosed. <laughs> you call me. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out, man. I can't feel my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I overdosed. Didn't think it was possible. Oh, but I did. Uh, I'm incredibly sick, though. Can you guys tell? Yeah. Not really. You sound oh. a little stuffy. Is it from oh, riding? Is it from what? Riding. Uh, definitely not my dirt bike, but possibly my bicycle. Yes. Okay. Right. Oh, geez, that's not where my mind went. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Get oh, your mind well, out of the gutter. Jason and Dave, thanks for joining us, man. We really appreciate it. We have a big week ahead of us. You guys, um, I mean. Where do we even start with you guys? You, you're offering so much support to AJ and this whole, the whole Pastrana tribute. So I, I want to jump in. Um, where do we want to start here? I don't know. I feel like both. Have, who, who do we start with? Dave, let's, can we start with you and just, uh, you were involved big time last year. You've been involved in my Supercross program the past what, two years, three years? I think three years. Sorry, yeah, that was a horrible flies, transition. Man. We're getting old. <laughs> yeah, you are, dude. I'm not aging, man. I'm staying this age forever. <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm, I my body's that. falling apart. Don't have kids. That's my recommendation. <laughs> Jesus, so you're I feel involved, like I've aged. Not to. Dave, you're involved I've aged this five year years again. the last year. God damn it, Bryce. Sorry. Jeez. <laughs> we, we fooled around too much before we started recording. I can't concentrate. <clears throat> So, Dave, you're involved this year again. Um, are you coming for the video shoot? Yes, sir, I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really pumped to be part of it again, man. Like any, anytime we all get a chance to collab on stuff like this, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm down for it without even questioning. So, uh, yeah, I fly into your spot, I think, on Saturday, and I'm there through Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. So, quite a We're while. We're going to have the whole nice. clan together. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be wild. I, I showed you my itinerary, like, for some reason, flying into your airport was wicked cheap. It cost me like twelve dollars. It was incredible. <laughs> Would you? Uh, what airline? Uh, Southwest. You have points with them, obviously. Yeah. Well, what? Uh, you flew into BWI or where? Uh, Dulles. Oh. Are you sure? That, that, that was a. Dude, Are you sure? I looked. I looked, and it was like it was so few points to fly. Wow. It's Arabian. That's nice. Southwest. Southwest. That's, uh, I, I guess I'm I'm now driving an essential crew member down, but I just found out today. So I, I, apparently I'm I'm <laughs> escorting Jesse, which I haven't even talked to him about. But I, I think he's pretty imperative. If we want to film anything. 
Did you guys so, text each other? No, I didn't even. I didn't even get a chance to. Uh, good. We don't. We I don't need them. No, no. <laughs> we just launch a couple of drones and we'll be fine. They follow you anyway. Whatever. So there's going to be a lot going on. With, uh, do, we, I'm, we're all going to talk about a million different things. But Bryce, are you bringing your drone? Yeah, I was going to bring it. I mean, I don't know how much use I'll be with it, but I was going to throw it in there. I mean, it's kind of a. I'm like fanboying already, and it's we're we're just doing this. I I don't even know what I'm going to do. I have no idea. Because Zach Romano do. has his drone, and Jesse's going to have his drone. It's well, we don't need all those drones. Hectic airspace. <laughs> they will probably crash and ruin everything uh yeah i don't think it's a very drone friendly place anyways <laughs> so let's back like up it. for a second and we talked about it in last episode and by now pretty much everybody knows the crew is headed to pastrana land it's monday no uh september 16th today we're going in less than a week sunday we'll be there uh the afternoon right to kind of get the lay of the land come up with a plan on where your video shoot for straight rhythm is going to be, which is going to be mostly on Monday, Tuesday, but yep. we're all kind of meeting, conjugating at Travis Pastrana's house on Sunday. So the fact that I even just said that sentence is still kind of surreal to me right now, but I'm so freaking pumped. Like I cannot believe that we're going to be there. So thank I you. Don't think Jason even, I don't think Jason even, I don't think Jason knew that was planned. No, I didn't. Uh, Jason, are you? It's cool though. I'm glad, I'm glad to find that out now. Uh, no, the, the bike. <laughs> cool. I mean, you don't it's have cool. to go so, Sunday. We're just checking like, things out and kind of scouting it out. You can you can go Sunday if you'd like. Hey, it's Jason here with SGB Racing. I'll just do my own plugs and stuff. <laughs> 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 What's SGB Wait, you're not, Racing, I, Jason? I thought you were. I thought you were police detail for the, the, for the, the trip. <laughs> for the guy that th finds out everything after it's done. That guy. Mm. Mm. Welcome to the club, Jason. <laughs> 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 right, wait, do you guys get the, the line from AJ? Oh, wait, I didn't tell you this? Oh, wait, I didn't yeah, tell you this? Yeah, all the time. I love that one. That was my favorite. Literally, oh, dude, he, he I tells, haven't told you? He tells me I'm going to fly someplace. He's like, hey, you're going to fly here in this state. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks for telling me like the plan. I guess I'm book a flight right now. <laughs> because you know what happened is I would always tell the story multiple times to the same person, and I was so embarrassed that I was doing that, that now I, I must tell it to one person, and then I assume everyone else must have heard the story. It's yeah, bad. So, sure. so I just pretty much no one figures anything out. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jason, I want to I wanna start with you if I could, because you've already been involved with Travis in, in one way or another. And people who don't follow you on social media may not know, but it looks like you built bikes. You're, you're giving suspension support. You want to talk to everybody and tell them what you've done so far, if you're allowed to, to say. So, I mean, I, on, a, on a suspension level, I don't necessarily work with Travis. Um, but I did assist Racer X with a, one of their project builds um, where they requested us to do the suspension, um, set it up for him, and the uh, someone's getting chased by the police in this. No, you can hear that? <laughs> I was going to say, wow, that's, yeah. Yeah, you, that's far I would run, away. I, I would run faster. I would run faster. <laughs> I um, can barely hear that. <laughs> so... We set up a suspension set for him, coded it, and did all the internals, and we went down there. That was a long time ago. Um, I want to say end of May um, with Racer X and Travis, and he rode the bike, and that actually just got released in this month's issue of Racer X, and they just did a video on all their stuff, and it's it's been hitting social media pretty good. Um, funny story about that was while I was building these straight rhythm bikes, and talking with other sponsors for this project, that video dropped, and everyone thought I went down there without getting all the stuff. So my phones blew up with all these companies that were really upset because they thought I filmed the straight rhythm shoot without any. Oh. And I Dude, was like, can no, I, just just timing. Can I tell you how many confu like conflicting things there have been that's happened that's had everybody do the same thing on me? Like when Travis <laughs> announced that he was racing straight rhythm everybody in my group was like hold on a second they're sending the link freaking out they're like did you know about this i'm like and nobody's on the same page and i knew that happened because I, do you know how many people tagged me in the link of that 125 thinking that, that <laughs> i had texted some, you i was like wait some involvement what? of me but that but the link but of see, that 125 build had nothing to do with me 
th- there was a perfect example because I didn't know that either. And I texted you and you were like, wait, I didn't tell you. So there's a perfect example of that. Yep. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I'm not, I don't want to open up too many wounds here or get into any controversy just yet. But that bike, Jason, is a Suzuki. Uh, and we all know the plan for AJ riding in straight rhythm is, is not on a Suzuki. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about because I'm building a Suzuki right here. So, ah, uh, but that's for the video shoot, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> AJ, help me out here. He's got a lot of What's bikes the... in that garage. Yeah. So Jason, keep, keep going. What, what is your plan? What is your role? Tell everybody now's your opportunity to kind of explain how you fit into this picture. Cause you are an integral part and a major part in all this. So give it to us. Alrighty. Well, I am the village idiot, and um, I decided to build as many bikes for straight rhythm as I could. Um, so, obviously, how many are you building? Where... <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. What what is the are... total? Four, four. <laughs> I am building four bikes for straight rhythm. Three of them will be raced at straight rhythm, and one, which is an RM125, will be used for the promotional video and all that stuff that is being recorded at Pastrana's in a week. Now, this started with, where did this start? So this started with you asking me to build a a KTM 150 for you right, into and a Suzuki. A typical Jason style. Uh-huh. Yep, typical you... me. I was like, this was going to, it was driving me insane because I like to have, I like to have a lot of work for myself and, um, no free time, so I was saw that it, only one bike was n- not going to tie up enough of my time, and the fact right. that it was a KTM was stressing me out. So I was like, "We got to do an RM," and so I reached out to a friend of, named Mark Cross who had a a beautiful 2003 RM125 that he was willing to let us use for this, um, and he got me that. So then I started this whole process. Not thinking now that I had to do two sets of wheels and two sets of exhaust systems and two sets of fully coated suspension and, you know, all the race tech internals and, you know, all this stuff to match on these two bikes. And then I tried to pitch <laughs> to AJ a long time ago about my Grant Langston idea. And he thought it was a good idea, but wanted to go the Pastrana route, which I understand. but. I really wanted to do a Grant Langston themed bike um, for a couple of reasons. I really liked the 2003 year where he won the championship. Um, didn't know he won the championship and had to get a phone call after the whole series was over because they didn't actually race Troy that year. So he found out later that he won. But besides that, he's also the announcer. So on a business standpoint, he's going to see his replica and be the announcing the entire time. So I thought it was a good promotional side. <laughs> So, um, I reached out to Jerry Robin and, uh, he was pumped on it, just ecstatic and and really wouldn't be a part of the program. So that developed into that. Um, and then I was like, well, if we can do that many, then why can't we do one more? So I went and got another bike and reached out to, uh, Jeff Walker and, He's been doing a lot on social media and YouTube stuff and doing a lot of the vlog side of things. So I thought it would be, yep. it would create a new like twist, you know, just a different viewpoint. So, and just like everyone else, he was ecstatic and we were actually going to do a David Pingree theme, um, 2002 David Pingree bike. Um, very iconic because KTM told them to do a lightweight piston, which, uh, did not work well for him at all. And he actually cased a triple and snapped the triple clamps. The bike in two. So I remember very that. I, very Off iconic. Yep, yep, very iconic. Um, so I, it, that is snowballed into that. And if you want to now know the, how much I have of the bikes done, I will tell you they're all frames. I just picked up motors today from MX Solutions. Um, and I have boxes and boxes of parts from FMF and. Pro taper and bolt hardware and traction <laughs> seat covers. It's just I have assembled none of them, and they have to be done this week. 
So, so the for three the bikes. Sorry, go ahead, AJ. <laughs> Ray, Ray <laughs> Can we just have a buzzer? Yeah, let's have a buzzer here. Go ahead. Buzz in, please. <laughs> so the the three bikes, other than obviously the the aesthetics, they're going to be identical, correct? In motors and in, internals, like all that type of stuff. Yes, all the all the motors and all the suspension are are honestly identical um, to each other. Now, obviously, the suspension settings will be set to each individual rider, but as far as what they're using is identical. Um, and then, like I said, motors are all all identical from MX Solutions. So where so I was going with that, Jason, this. was for the technically inclined listener, what give us the 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 rundown of what you've done to the bikes. Like when they when they show up at straight rhythm, what are people gonna be expecting for wheels, for I, I mean you name it. So I mean I we bought the bikes from Ridersville. I get them in a crate and then I tear them down from there. I mean everything from we powder coated the frames to to match the the replicas and then I start again from that frame up um, with yeah different wheels different exhaust systems different suspension coatings and those types of things i don't want to go into too much detail about like what colors are what um and we'll, what's done we'll to the motor it's nothing too too crazy right it's just like pretty like uh cleaning it up no i mean the k10 motors are uh are very fast from the from the box um but yeah i mean it's definitely a a, a port with um some polished tranny just to deeper all of it and help it shift smoother. Um, match the the cases and stuff like that. Um, Ian at MX Solutions does a great job at that. So it's it's top notch. I don't ask too many questions because I trust them. Yeah, I have heard yeah, good it's... things about those motors. We could have three uh, SGB bikes on the podium. That would be pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, I'd like to have a lot of pressure on you guys for that. So. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be no fun anymore, and I just want it to be straight seriousness. Okay, I'm game. <laughs> no, I'm here for a good time, and honestly, I don't, I don't care where anyone finishes. But everyone better finish better than they did last year. Is all I got to say. Okay, I could do that. I got room for so, improvement. <laughs> Jason, how does how does preparing the suspension for straight rhythm differ from? Any other supercross track, or does it? So obviously Good you don't question. have cornering to worry about. Solid question. So yeah, I mean, obviously the biggest thing that we chase on suspension side of it is keeping it stiff enough to hold up in all the you know abrupt transitions of the jumps or the whoops, um, and all that stuff. We have to sacrifice for cornering, um, just because mm -hmm. when it's super stiff, it it definitely affects the corners. So it's kind of a little bit easier just because we can set it up to be stiff. And I don't, I don't think you're going to hear a guy say it's too stiff for that stuff. I mean, they can hammer it as hard as they want and they don't have to worry about turning. So it should be a much easier setup, honestly. Yeah. Really in that situation, it would be st honestly the stiff for the better. I, last year I raced it on outdoor settings and it was a lot of work because it was going through the stroke. Basically, you don't want it to go that far through the stroke when you're trying to push a rhythm section that aggressive and that hard. And then when you're hitting whoops, obviously, I don't know anything about about suspension, but I think we both agreed that we could probably go with a pretty darn aggressive setting. And I don't think anyone would be complaining about that. No, no, I think I think stiff is where we're gonna head. And uh, honestly, with it being out in California and it and all the bikes being identical, we can kind of easier i can we can make changes pretty quickly um with it being a two-stroke it's it's also super simple to pull the shock out um so i mean if like i said we need to make changes i'll have the actual whole entire race rig out there since i'm driving out um so we'll have more resources and with practice being on a friday and then we have all of friday night before saturday morning stuff and the, the actual show starts we we have tons of time to make those adjustments uh, hey, real quick question. Did you get a brace or braces for the whole shot device on the fork guard? For I just thought of that portion? just now. Yeah, no, I didn't, like, we didn't get any on the lowers yet. <laughs> okay. It might be worth doing now that I think of it just because uh, of how stiff maybe we're going. 
I just don't want to risk like ripping out a fork guard. Yeah, I, mean, I think I, that I happened in Supercross this year. Yeah, it did happen to us a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> two, two years in a row. You think we would have learned the first time? But exactly, no. exactly. Hey, just, Jason, just I have a for the for record, you, though, the first three rounds we had zero mechanicals. Just throwing that out there. Round four, it well, fell apart. Well, because you weren't there. Was that a correlation? Uh-huh. Round four. Yeah, I was going to say. Round four, you came back. There was like a missing side panel, like no four cars. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> now, was that Rit Rock? Hey, Jason. Was, that, was that his doing? Yeah, I was think it, who? it was. AJ, Whit the team. Oh, yeah. Dave, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Jason. So you're going to have like three pretty mint KTM 125s or 150s. What are you going to do with them when they're when we're all said and done with this event, man? You're going to have like the nicest 125s in the country pretty much. Like you're going to raffle those things off, you're going to sell them, you're going to race them. Like what's the deal with them? They are all sold already. <laughs> Ooh. Really? Boy. Yeah. That's awesome. To Albert yep. Cat Zero. No, I I <laughs> I offered it. You took too long. You can't afford it, those is it, bikes. It, is that one gone? Yeah, they're all gone. Oh, good. Yeah, there was the, one that I was possibly available. One, I sold the third one this weekend up at the uh, Race Rex main event. Dude, you're on it. I don't play around. You know that. Well, Listen, somebody has to be around right, here. Give me enough Honestly, time for the, and I'll make it happen. For the for the price you sold you sold them for, I mean, it, you would and you're in the market for that bike, you would be dumb to not buy the right. I mean, you you sold yeah. it for next to nothing. Absolutely. And I mean, it, it, they it were, has more. They're sick bikes. It has more money in aftermarket parts on this thing than it does to actually buy the bike. And all I was <laughs> looking for was what I sold for, was what I purchased the bikes for. Right. And it, the bikes will have what? Maybe two hours on them? Yeah. Yeah. That's so wild. So that... And if and honestly, the if we win a lot, they'll have less hours. Just want everyone to keep that in mind for the new owners. Oh, right. So it doesn't right. go to the third round. Yeah, we don't need to ride yeah. three times, guys. Let's just ride twice. We'll get enough publicity. We don't need to do three rides. Darn, dude. There I kind of wanted See that bike, it? but I didn't pull the trigger. Yeah. You want to do it again? I, I already have loser. themes for next year. Is it is it too soon to like start talking about next year's straight rhythm? <laughs> this <laughs> is such a cool event. It It just makes it so fun and it gets everybody involved. And we actually have a chance of winning, which I don't want to beat uh, negative Nancy, but when I show up for a 450 Supercross, I don't really think I have a chance of winning. Oh my God, I hate you. We're not going to go there, but I, I like straight rhythm <laughs> because it's so fun. It's just like a fun event. It's, it, you know, Energy Cup is what, two weeks after? That has like a much more, I know it's supposed to be fun, and this year it was going to be wacky with three different track layouts essentially that's supposed to be fun but it has like the air of seriousness it's kind of like the pre-version right. of the it's whole still very season. serious yeah it you know there's a lot on the line financially for the million dollar uh, overall uh, or uh, sweep and straight rhythm just doesn't have any of that it's all about just having a good time which i love how it's evolved over the years to now it's just exclusively two strokes and the the uh, roster is just stacked it's gonna be so fun to see um hey real quick while on topic of monster cup can i ask a question because i'm sitting here staring at my notes and i don't know if any of you guys know about it or not <clears throat> did you guys listen to the podcast or see the articles about sabachi and the monster cup drama from last year a little bit no you sent it to me no, and i didn't I, get to listen I know to nothing. it nothing i know nothing about it oh you don't jason you'll get a kick out of this i think and no. Dave, what do you know? What do you know about it? Anything? Uh, probably not more than you know. Um, so little backstory. Obviously, pretty much everybody knows. Last year, Tomac won all three motos. In the last moto, he was won one going into it, and he was coming through the pack. Last lap, who's freaking dog? <laughs> That's not yours. Last lap. That's mine. No, who's who's? Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. He's fired. Somebody's stealing the bike. Sabachi <laughs> let Tomac <laughs> close in, and then like two turns to go, he let Tomac by. I think he actually physically waved him by. Um, mm-hmm. So Big Tomac won the million dollars. 
we talked about it afterward. Like it was, it was such a, it was, it was such an annoying thing to watch. No, I'm all for it. I think it should have happened. Just for the record. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think I, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I because mean, it, yeah. I mean, you're talking the difference between Tomac making a hundred thousand dollars and a million dollars. Um. Oh, I get that part. I just wanted him to yeah, win. We talked about it back then. I wanted him to win just straight up. But yeah, I get it. Okay, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, so some people's argument on that on this is that Tomac would have passed him in that last turn no matter what. I say 150% absolutely not. Savachi was jumping further into the sand than Tomac. If Savachi was faster anywhere on the track, he was faster in the sand, which was the last section of the track. The only thing after that was a tight 180 horseshoe into into the finish. Tomac wouldn't have passed him. So, anyways, Tomac, uh, Savachi lets Tomac by. He wins a million dollars. Everyone just assumes that they had worked out some kind of deal prior that Tomac would pay out Savachi X amount, or you know, I just assume that even if they hadn't spoken on it beforehand, that just it was the right thing to do to just pay Savachi the difference. You know, because think about it, Savachi, he lost out on a moto win bonus. So they're structured from the team um, to get paid per moto win. And then he went from second overall to third overall by dropping that position. So he's losing the difference there. Probably in the range of, I don't know, 30 to 70 grand probably that he lost would be my guess. I would just have assumed that Tomac would have kindly just gave him that money as a thank you. So it came out on this podcast, and you guys will have to listen to it because it was, I thought, super candid, just very interesting. Savachi said that Tomac hasn't even so much as said thank you. Hasn't even acknowledged the fact that Savachi let him by. Are you, are you surprised, what? though? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, Tomac is there introverted a... for sure, but that's kind of that's pretty messed up. I mean, even an introverted person could say thank you. And and this is and I'll I'll kind of preface this all by saying I, I don't know both sides of the story. Nobody knows Tomac's side of the story. So whether this is true or not, I don't know. But if what Savachi is saying is true, obviously that's kind of messed up on Tomac's well, part. You know what I would have to know before I really made a decision on that, like how I felt, is what was their camaraderie like beforehand? You know, was it were they, like how interactive are they together? How how much do they talk? How much do they debrief together? You know, or are they are they just on the same team, or are they there's like a kinship there? And if I think if it would so be even weirder, which one's if worth more? They did talk. Which one's worth more? What I'm I'm saying if if there was if there was an, ever a time where they they did debrief, they did talk after a, a, a race or a moto or whatever, and just this time he just you know, shunned him or didn't say anything, didn't say thank you. I find it hard to believe that you don't go back to the rig and be like, dude, thank you. You know, even in passing. But yeah, hey, you would think so. So and then I guess supposedly before the moto, Savachi, they were on their spin bikes together and Savachi said, Hey, wh where do you want to line up? Like where do you want me? Do you want me on the inside of you inside of you or the outside of you? And Tomac just kind of shrugged it off and said, eh, it doesn't matter. And then uh Tomac's mechanic, Brian Kranz, I think is his name, kind of put it in and said, oh, it, it won't matter anyway because we're going to whole shot you anyhow. And then the conversation just kind of ended. Um, Savachi said afterward, the Tomac's dad, John, and then Tomac's mom, Dave, what's Tomac's mom's name? Oh, man. I just oh, I talked to her just... like the last race. No, I Patricia. know her name. It's gonna come. It's gonna come to me like after this is all over. I guarantee you. Um. So his mom and dad went up to Savachi right after the race and thanked him, but he didn't actually get a thank you from Tomac. And I guess a little bit down the road, they had a, a meeting at the test track, and to talk about kind of what was gonna happen. And I guess they had agreed on paying the difference for the the cost that I just mentioned before. Um. And then for whatever reason, I guess John Tomac couple weeks later so that they weren't doing it yikes i just yeah that's no, awkward hey. how do you go through the rest of the season in the same trailer with them and not always think of that every single time if that's true that's really messed up man because that that was very and if it's true that they didn't have any type of 
uh, talk about it beforehand. That was pretty cool to, of Sabachi to, to do that without team orders or he just thought it was the right thing to do. And then he expected that Tomac would kind of do the right thing back. But nice guys finished last. It's a bummer. <laughs> moral Kathy, moral, yes. moral Kathy. of the story. Kathy. Can write the yeah. book on that one, yeah. huh? Yeah. Kathy. Yeah, man, I've been sh shafted more than a couple times, but that's, yeah, I just, it popped into my head while you, when you mentioned Monster Cup, so I figured I would tell you guys what happened. So who's going so to Monster Cup? So are any of you guys going? Thank you. Oh, I was just going to ask that question. Oh, well, you're a little slow. <laughs> what? Uh, what question? <laughs> who's, going, who's going to Monster Cup? Oh, not I. Jason, are you going? I will be there. Oh, you uh, are? I think I'm going to be there also, Jason. Well, we'll hang out. Both of you guys are trying should to talk me into it. You guys should share a room. I tried to get you to race, but you were being a little pansy about it. Yeah, no, man. I'm. I go back into retirement after straight rhythm. I, I have, I'm gonna have the trailer out there. Like, why wouldn't we race it? Give me four uh, reasons publicly. I need four public reasons. Uh, oh man. Okay. One is scared. <laughs> two is scared. Three is scared. Four is scared. Re reason number one. Uh, the, I don't want to ride the track backwards. Reason number <laughs> I don't two. Blame you. <laughs> You don't actually, know what you would do with some... a million dollars? Is that what it is? Actually, that, that is something that I would want to do. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, real reason number one, the track is usually way too high speed. I don't like going fast. Reason number two, um, <laughs> Monster Cup, they only usually show like the first place guy on TV anyways. So I just, yeah, that's a bad reason because the trailer's going to be out there anyway. Uh, reason number three. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'm winning. Uh, ret uh, uh -huh. Retirement and reason number four. Um, it, it's a long flight. <laughs> you can drive with me if you want. Sounds like super good there. reasons. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm not going, man. I even texted Allie asking if you guys were going to try to entice the both of you to go, and she was like, no, it's not happening. No, I mean, it, it would be possible that we could go and just like, maybe gamble but why don't, why don't you do that we had a blast in, in vegas in may vegas vegas was fun we had yeah, a blast it, man super fun. i have been having more and more fun there lately because i've just i love going to the golden nugget uh yeah maybe i don't know we, we I will shall tell see you though that craps was not our game oh my gosh dave were you there yeah um i had no idea what you guys were playing i just know that i was all into blackjack <laughs> gambling you... with AJ's money, so. <laughs> oh yeah, did did you win or did you lose? Uh, I was up and down. I ended up losing everything, but like mm, I was up nice. a little bit, and then yeah, so good learning lesson. Yeah, and then Jason talked me into playing craps, and uh, all of us lost all of our money. So thanks, Jason. You're welcome. I still so don't. Mean, I to this day I don't know how I lost my money, but I did lose it. No, craps is the most confusing game of all time. But everyone is they're having so much fun. Yeah. That's like you walk yeah. through the casino, everyone's yelling and hooting and hollering. And I was like depressed and suicidal. It was so, I lost so much money so it, quickly that it was, I didn't know what it to was do. the worst game. That was the worst Dude, game. The last time I was in Vegas, which was for uh, my buddy's wedding, uh, not this past February, the February before, we went wedding out there. Or bachelor and party? Wedding. Like he got married oh, wow. at uh, Little Elvis. Uh, oh, Ricky did, right? The, yeah, yeah. The, what is it called? Uh, yeah, whatever. Some little chapel, some famous chapel. Um, and one of the kids we went out there with, like a couple weeks before we were there, he goes into the gas station. Then he, he, he won like a $60,000 scratch off ticket, right? Cash what, somebody in. you know? Yeah, yeah. The one, like my, my friend's wife's best friend, husband. So, yeah, one of the kids that we were there. <laughs> Okay. So, so he goes. So he goes in. He 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 wins a sixty thousand dollars scratch off ticket. Then, like he goes into the same place a week later, buys another scratch off ticket, hits a million dollars win for life scratch off. What? Yeah. How in God's name did that happen? But yeah, he did it. So and that was uh, last time I was in Vegas. Was with him. Wow. And was he lucky in Vegas? If you just won a million dollar scratch off ticket, would you play Vegas? No. <laughs> so he so, didn't. Oh, he wasn't. Oh, 
No, no, he, his, that, well. he just nope. He just took it as like that was his that was his luck and wow, that was that. smart man. Mm-hmm. You should have started with that. I had no Black. idea where we were going with that. By the way, yes, yeah, sorry, I go off on tangents. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, wait, hold on, was he in Vegas or was he not in Vegas? <laughs> yeah, I, I said that. I said the last time I was in Vegas, that was the first thing I said. Hey guys, I'm buzzing in. Denied. Dave, what's up, oh, man? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to ask Dave a question. Go ahead. Go ahead what's hey, up? guys, I'm buzzing in again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, so, Dave, for everyone wondering who the heck you are, can you... Uh, Jason told his story. You want to you wanna tell us who you are, man? Yeah, no worries. Uh, I'm probably AJ's only black friend, so there's that. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> oh, come on. But, no, uh, <laughs> yeah, so like like AJ said, uh, I've been with AJ's program for probably like three years now, uh, and I am the proprietor of uh, the collective experience, and we're an all access fan experience, primarily for Supercross and Motocross, where we get fans behind the scenes with professional racers like AJ Cat, Adam Ensignap, Tyler Bowers. Uh, we had Jerry Robin on, Henry Miller. I mean, any top satellite and privateer rider, we're they're on our program. And we're back for year two with the uh, Straight Rhythm crew. So um, we're going to be giving some really exclusive behind the scenes content with AJ Cat as part of our all access program where fans um, like everyone listening can go on to our exclusive Facebook page once you sign up and get exclusive content you really can't get anywhere else. AJ himself is going to be in there. We're going to throw Bryce in there so we can talk to people. We're going to throw in all the sponsors and make sure we have a really immersive, interactive all access group that uh you can tune into and really get some um behind the scenes cues and insights it's going to be a uh, pretty fun not every day you can kind of check out Pashana's place from the inside look like that yeah and there's going to be some juicy stuff because we have about six or seven of our close friends that will all be there filming behind the scenes content so hopefully i i really try to not get my hopes up for these types of things because I could see this being extremely cool, but I'm just trying to downplay it because I don't want to be disappointed. Mm-hmm. Me neither. I, really, I, you, I yeah. hope it yeah. goes. I hope it goes good. I mean, it's really rare that we get like all of the crew together to do shenanigans. You know what I mean? So it'll be fun. It, man. Every time somebody asks me, I keep saying, well, "You know, I, for all I know, Travis isn't even going to be there." And every, they're like, "What? What? I thought that was the whole idea." I'm like, "Well, you know, he's a busy guy. Maybe he'll get a phone call and have to go do something." So. That's kind of the mindset I'm maintaining here is like I'm expecting him to not even be there and we're going to ha- kind of fend for ourselves. That would still be cool. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but I'm trying to tell myself that's what's going to happen so that anything on top of that is just a bonus because it, I uh, I don't want to talk. I don't want to say I don't want to jinx it, but it could be the sickest two or three days ever. Like I, there's a lot of really cool stuff that we have. That's I only know about two of the three days. Well, yeah, we purposely yeah. didn't tell you about the first one. We we might Sorry. invite you for Tuesday. We don't need the bikes. I was just gonna. I was gonna say you may not yeah. have a bike. We'll find out. No, Jason, we definitely did include you. We were, we were talking to you about you riding an e-bike with us on Sunday night. So you can't you can't say that. I thought that was last. Oh weekend. yeah, we. No, that's this coming weekend, man. You better be training. Did you start training yet for that? I went to Hardy's. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I went Dude, to Chick Fil A yesterday. I think it got me sick. I want Jason to show up at Fountainhead with like a full-on police-issued track with like lights and sirens. <laughs> you, you may you oh, may tell you a funny you, you may tell you a funny police track story. Oh, please. I, I do. I want to hear. It. I love your police stories. <laughs> All right. So most of the listeners probably don't know. Um, I did eleven years of police in Baltimore. <laughs> Um, just recently Solid. left, so that way I could build bikes for AJ. Um, thanks, man. And uh, I was I was bike patrol, and we used to go out at midnight and just and ride bikes, um, mostly just for fun. As so a skate park. The <laughs> <laughs> the police bikes were the worst maintained, and they're probably from like 1980s. So they were just like horrible, and we were probably like five miles away from our cars and the guy I was with his pedal fell off. <laughs> so we had to go the whole way back with one pedal. 
<laughs> oh, oh my god, that's yeah, classic. absolutely. It was it was ridiculous. And then why? So you had cars, but you also had bikes. Yeah. So we would, you know, obviously we would use the cars most of the time. But if it slowed down or it was a, you know, city block, get a would, quick pedal in. We, you know, and that's honestly what we, <laughs> back then. I we just use it for exercise and and just it was nothing going on, so we would just ride bikes around, um, and. I guess I can say this now because I don't work there anymore, but, you know, we would just really just have a lot of fun <laughs> with the uh, with the bikes. And, uh, yeah, they were built like crap. So every time you took one out, something fell off, whether it was a pedal or, like, your handlebars or something. Mm-hmm. It just it was always a nightmare, but it made it fun. Who's, like, maintaining those things? Or nobody? Um, yeah, no one. Oh, good. <laughs> and then... Nice. <laughs> so we had a... Uh, I'll do one more for it, bike related. We put them on the back of the cars, and I got a call for a <laughs> shots fired. And I get there, and I'll try to leave most of the details out. But there was a female with a gunshot wound to the head, and then there was someone else there, and was and I was trying to get him to listen or listen to the verbal commands I was giving him to to settle down. And I can hear this like screeching sound coming and i remember i got a a possible suspect who maybe just shot somebody barely listening to me who's laying down and i just hear this overwhelming screech and i'm like someone is on their brakes getting to me and i'm like huh so they pull up and as he's coming down the road i'm like what is that well the bicycle fell off of the bike rack when he hit a speed bump <laughs> and it was still like attached to it in the side so it was like on its wheels next to the car, but running <laughs> into the car <laughs> the entire time. And then it finally and that's how fell over. And buddy just pulled dragging. up to the scene? Yeah, just dragging, pulling up the scene. And like, <laughs> I remember that over all the other commotion going on. And that was – so bike patrol was great. It was fun. We were, I was a really good police officer, as you can tell. Nice. Oh my God. Could you imagine <laughs> a, somebody pulling up to the scene like that? It's like Reno 911. <laughs> 90% of police work is Reno 911. Hey, speaking of police, I did just call the police uh, a couple days ago on somebody. Yeah, that was weird. almost got raped. Yo, uh, <laughs> what? You know what? I just had a revelation. So, oh boy. Bear, my dog Bear has been acting awfully aggressive the last three days, and we can't figure out why. Like, he, yesterday... He went at another dog like I've never seen to the point where Allie got all scratched up and she was panicking and like made her cry afterward because she was so stressed out about it. And he's kind of gone after a couple other dogs. I think the incident with this person that I'm about to tell the story, I think maybe it spooked him. I think he's got PTSD and some, something's happening. Right. Mm, because, yeah, I don't know. Wait. <laughs> so did I tell the story yet? Did I tell the story on the podcast? No. Did I even tell the story to, to you personally? Uh, I Just from your Instagram, I mean, what else is there to tell? <laughs> it's pretty well okay, laid well, out just, on your Instagram stories. It just, I want to give you more of a visual because I, this is still Please. really, really spooky to me. So Bear and I hike in the trail uh, by our house every single day. We're hiking. He's off leash, even though he's not supposed to be. He's off leash. He's running ahead of me. I'm not paying that much attention. We come around a corner, all of a sudden Bear just stops in his tracks, and I kind of walk up behind him. He starts growling, and I, he would never normally do that. If he saw a deer or a squirrel, he would just chase after it with his tail wagging. He starts growling. So I look up, and it's somebody with their head down, arms crossed, s- standing up, j- facing away from me. Didn't with a hooded jacket on. Well, it was uh, – so I don't know how to – does somebody have a TV on in the background? No. Jason? No. You're so concerned with the background noise. You're so neurotic. No, I'm, I'm Last in Last week. Is your the, TV on, Jason? Dude. D- no, I, there's no TV on. So help me God. AJ, your TV pipe on. down. Last week, you heard my wife in my upstairs bathroom blow drying her hair through three layers of floor. I don't know what the hell your problem is. Dude, and, he's got, and he's got police sirens in the background. I don't even want to hear it. So oh, that's unfreaking dog acceptable. barks at everybody. God. It must be Dave. Dave's being awfully quiet over there. I'm literally not doing anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't believe you. 
<laughs> Make with the story. Anyways, moment. to describe what this person has on, it's like, uh, have you ever seen the sh- the TV show Hand, uh, something Maids, Handmaid's Tale? Handmaid's what the hell Tale. is that show? Handmaid's Tale. Jeez. Uh, like yeah. from the 1600s type looking thing, where the it, like a dress kind of down to the, their ankles, sandals, <clears throat> and something that covered their head, uh, like an Amish person would wear or something. Dirt bike helmet. So, yeah, in a rye. <laughs> and just facing away, Solid not plug. reacting at all to du- uh to duck. <laughs> to bear we call it bear duck. <laughs> T- to bear. <laughs> <laughs> not reacting at all to bear. And that's freaky in itself. And I quick like I'm like, what what is going on? So I quickly put bear on the leash and then we just book it the other direction. Where we had stumbled upon this person was kind of close. Like you could see the parking lot of my gym in kind of in the distance from where this person was. So I was like, all right, we'll just book it all the way back. So I'm running all the way back, just looking over my shoulder the whole time, like a scared little kid. Get bear into the truck. We drive my truck around to the gym and I park in the parking lot and I could still see that they're standing right in the same spot. At this point, this is 15 minutes later. I sit there for about 25 minutes in my truck, watching them in the trail, not move a muscle. And I'm like, all right, I got to call the cops. This is ridiculous. Call the cops. The cops take like a half hour. So thankfully, I wasn't in any trouble. I'm not sure what they're, rest and police are up to because there's no crime here. Bikes. They're riding bikes. Guarantee it. They're definitely <laughs> riding bikes. There's definitely. And they there's don't lots have of good trails around here. So see, I did see a pedal on the side of the WOD today. Um, and the cops finally show up. And I'm just sitting there in my truck. I watch them get out of the, uh, their cop cars, start walking into the trail. And then... I, the person, this figure, just finally starts speed walking. I'm like, holy shit, here we go. They speed walk out of sight, and then all of a sudden, both cops start running. I'm like, oh, this is the real deal. All right. So the cops start <laughs> running. They finally come back like 15 minutes later without this person. And so I got out of my truck. I walk up, and he goes, Actually, he reminded me of you, Jason. He was so nonchalant about this. He goes, Yeah, we, we, he goes, Yeah, we, we know her. I'm like, what do you mean you know her? He's like, yeah, she just has some mental problems. She goes for walks and just gets lost and stares at things. <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm like, uh, I mean, that's kind of creepy. Like, is that not a dist- this pr- not dressed in normal attire? Like, dr- dressed in really the most creepy thing you could have ever ever stumble upon somebody in the woods wearing. I thought it was in the Blair Witch Project at first. The, the outfit did did make it a lot worse. It absolutely made it a lot worse. And it was the tallest woman I've ever seen in my entire life. This woman had to have been six feet. With that is the on. tallest woman you've ever seen. Six foot. Come on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with sandals, no heels. Much, you? Straight up to six feet. That's a I tall woman. I've never been to a basketball like, game. I, I didn't see anything. She was probably 80 years old. What? Yeah, uh, it was just really, really creepy. And I think... Uh, Dude, but isn't it sad, though? Like, thank God we don't have... That's like first types of health issues. Right? Yeah, I mean, think about her life and, like, the, her family's life and having to deal with that. And, like, that's just really sad. Oh, I thought you were I going mean, elsewhere with that. Definitely not. Yeah, but definitely maybe still she's... Creepy. Maybe... Yeah, but maybe she's happy just wandering. The, That's maybe what I'm saying. Like, you know, she's content as shit just staring in the woods. I want that life. Yeah, right. All right. Yeah. Sign me be. up. Yeah, because yeah. she didn't even react when Bear was just growling like crazy about five feet from her, and she didn't even – she was in the zone. <laughs> and and if I was one of the police officers, I would have came back and be like, I never saw her. What are you talking about? <laughs> I would have made, made you feel stupid. That would be my mission. <laughs> Oh, hey, so I, when they came back without her, I was like, I felt so bad. I'm like, please tell me that wasn't somebody just like nature walking, wa- wa- watching, walking, nature watching. Well, it depends what they're what doing. What is it called? AJ, Help if they're just here. watching, then it's watching. If they're walking, then it's walking. Bird, bird watching, nature walking is maybe where I was going with that. Hey, um, along these same lines, are you going to back up a dirt bike at Estrada's house? Uh, Dave, are you going to be the first black person to do a backflip? I pray to God. That'll be my only claim to fame, man. I got nothing <laughs> else going for me. Can we confirm? <laughs> is it, wait, wait, wait. Is this an actual can, thing that could happen? Like, it, it, that stat could hold up? 
Yeah, can I don't we know. confirm we, that we, an African American has not done a backflip on a dirt bike? <laughs> we we talked about it like three, four weeks ago, and like when we talked about this, we texted AJ. I'm like, I could possibly be like the first black dude to like land a backflip, but I don't know if that's a confirmed stat or not. But I'm gonna call the Guinness Book and see if we can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna call it a confirmed stat if you land it. We're, <laughs> I, I'm, we're not, I'm not it jumping in. I'm not jumping in on this category. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, Jason, you could be the oh, first Jason. black man to land a backflip. <laughs> <laughs> or has anybody – how how does his straight – because Travis built – I mean, for those of you who don't know, Travis is racing straight rhythm also in an exhibition race, 500, two-stroke against Bowers. Um, so he built at, at least a portion of a straight rhythm track at his compound. Does anybody know how long it is and how it how it stacks up to – I mean, clearly it's not a half a mile think, long or whatever. No, I don't, I don't think it's very long at all, actually. Um, I think it's I like talking. a triple on off and a wall jump and then a left hand turn and like a dragon's back. <laughs> gotcha. It's kind of what it looked like to me. Do you do you know Jason? Um I talked to I actually saw um Hubert today um and was talking to him a little bit about it and he said that it was it's not very long. Um the transitions are pretty uh are pretty steep right now. Um whether Which they stay good. that way, I don't know. Um did did Hubert uh, build it? Yeah, Hubert built it. Yep, that's so and cool. Then, yeah, that's this is the thing, guys. We we uh, we're going into this with really no idea. I don't know if there's going to be even enough track to make a video on the video that Travis just dropped on that RM125. Was that at his house? Of the RM125, yes. But like I said, that was back before. That was filmed in May, and that was right. At so John's who knows house. if. Um, if I had, yeah, so I mean, good. I have an idea of where they did it at, and I don't think there's that a whole lot of room. Um, it probably goes through the trees, if I had to guess, and then it opens up a little bit to a field. Yeah. Um, I think we'll have to get a little creative, but just, I mean, Jesse does it amazing. Oh, for job sure. Filming, so. I, I think you should stop worrying so much about like making it motocross or straight rhythm specific, and start being worried about how you're going to clear his entire house. I <laughs> think you should just jump his house. <laughs> I got to learn how to do a uh, Indian Air, a, what the heck do you even call it? A sea crab Indian Air. But Pastrana used to do it with the fender. Do you guys remember how he used to on the RM125 oh, used to just yeah. do a, yeah. a fender grab Indian Air? It's tall, though. He's a tall dude. So, yeah, I don't know. I got to learn how to do that one. That that makes me a little nervous. Unless we can cut like a a grab hole. I don't know. That's one thing. I hopefully, it, again, I don't want to get my hopes up here. Just Whoever's send it. Watching TV, you guys are killing me. Uh, I, I, I would like for Travis to teach me a couple of those things, and then obviously, you can't go to his house and not do a backflip. I haven't backflipped even a bicycle though, so that it, that does make me pretty nervous. <laughs> You'll be all right. You can backflip on your feet. You can backflip on a bike. Yeah, I, I kind of just – I'm going to tell Travis um, just to give me the most literal advice ever, like a step-by-step -step procedure I can follow, and I'll just do it. I People take for granted that jumping into the foam pit, I think a lot, maybe a lot of people listening are like, oh, it's a foam pit. I would do anything into that. It's mm. still scary. You're still on a very heavy bike. If you land upside down, it's still going to hurt. If you land upside down, you could get stuck under the thing until somebody gets it off of you. I mean, it's scary. Yeah, it is. And I people, people don't realize, I though, foam... that... Sorry, with Dan. the foam pit. Did you buzz in? <laughs> Jason, did you buzz in? No. I, Jason, my hand you're was up. up the whole time. My, my hand oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't see you. The worst. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> so with that, they actually – he kills the bike in the air, so it's not running when it hits the foam. Um, the foam, the foam is actually very flammable, and so is uh, everything inside the motorcycle, such as fuel and all that stuff. So, oh, uh, right. um, yeah, there's a freestyle guy who died last year, the year before, year before that, from a there's the, been a, there's uh, been a foam couple, pit catching fire. Yeah, there's been a couple with with foam pit, um, you know, going to oh, flames, good. and uh, I just wanted to really hype it up. So I'm trying my best to really bring down the morale of the uh, so you're I telling me that that's one more thing i have to worry about is shutting the bike off before i land that's yeah you'll be fine just go with it. don't don't think about it too much just just send it dude well you know what you could do i foam pitted at turn Woodward. the gas on 
Don't turn the deck yeah. gas on? Yeah, just... Yeah, yeah it'll eventually stall on you. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's true. That's a good idea. Bryce, did you buzz in? Yeah, I was... Uh, it's not that cool. Actually, this whole this whole experience is just going to be a, a a lesson in humility and how literally nothing I do is cool at all. Like, every... every yeah, well, same. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, oh, I, you're mediocre yeah. at everything. Nice. Yeah, trust me. I'm going to feel the same exact way. Yeah. Uh, well, if you had the opportunity, Bryce, would you backflip something into the foam pit? I would volunteer to go first. 100%. Absolutely. Oh, you yes. would? Yes. On a dirt bike or a bicycle? Whatever they offered me. Yes. Yes. I can oh, backflip wow. stuff. I can. I can. Yeah, that, I, that is true. You have experience doing that. <laughs> I don't. So I'm not worried about backflipping per se. I, I guess I'm a little worried about burning alive in a foam pit now. Oh, <laughs> uh, see, I'm not worried about that. You're welcome. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm <laughs> no. I, what I was gonna say was like foam pits are all well and fine when you're at like a little trampoline park, but when you actually have like pieces of mechanical things connected to you, especially like a 200 pound motorcycle, it's a little, uh, it's a little sketchy. I would imagine. I foam pitted at um, Woodward at Copper Mountain with skis on, and took like a ski to like the shoulder or whatever into a foam pit, and it, it's not that comfortable. <laughs> Foam pit, yeah, but it it still is not right. Awesome. Or if you turn right, it's better than or concrete. Street bike Tommy it and go straight Ooh. over the foam pit. It's so crazy that we're gonna literally be where all of that happened. Like the things I grew up on TV watching. Like how I love many how excited times you get, you get all of that. Oh my god! <laughs> you know how many times I've watched Street Bike Tommy flip over that foam pit on a on a street bike? I mean, come on. Such an iconic thing. Uh, yeah. Well, well, my question is though, are we going to go to his barbecue joint after? He has a barbecue joint. Oh come on, guys! <laughs> he did. I didn't know that. <laughs> what, where? And Jason, lay it on us. Come on. It, yeah, it's right. It's right next. It's right near you know Pastrana's house. There's a street bike. Tommy does have a barbecue joint, which is amazing. It's called the Looney Bin, right down there. Um. And I went there last time, but it is, you definitely have to go. Like you just, it's street by Tommy's place. If you're going to go down to the iconic compound down in Maryland, you, it just, it's one of those things that it just has to happen one time. Mm, or maybe we could do it right before our food. mountain bike ride. So we can poop um, our pants in the mountain bike ride. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Nice. But on, on that whole note, that whole note of, it's always, it's always scary meeting your, your childhood you know, heroes or, or idols. Cause you just, you don't want them to be like, you know, you don't want to give them a race when they give you no money for it. And that's always been one of my big fears. <laughs> so, um, went meeting Pastrana though. He's exactly how you think he would be. I mean, like when I was down there doing all the filming stuff, he was thanking us for being there. Like just that mentality, like the whole time. It's amazing. Just super happy. Like, he whatever, just seems like a super home, nice guy. This. He's the one who actually invited us out to, to the looney bin we went with him like he just it was like he made you feel at home even though you've never been there it's or, so you know. impressive for somebody to, to remain like that through all i mean there's times when there's too much going on for me and i forget to thank people or to to act like i'm grateful for certain things because it's just like i'm too caught up in the moment or you know maybe even sometimes i take certain things for granted and it, yeah it, it's true i mean you see, and the way he, I haven't talked to him on the phone, but we've texted a whole bunch. And every time he responds to my text, it's like the most thorough response you could ever get. And it's like, yeah, maybe he is exactly like what you would expect. That's awesome. My last run in with a major celebrity, I blew it. So did I tell that story the last episode? I, I think so. Remember. Who was it with again, though? <laughs> Ken, Ken Block. Block. Yeah, yeah, you did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What a loser. Uh, Don't yeah, embarrass us in front of Travis, man. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, I guess I'll never have a connection with Monster Energy now, but at Red Bull, we still have a chance. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, nice. So, me, hmm, I'm, I'm in the red zone, phone battery-wise. Hey, I put out a thing asking people to ask me questions. I did get one really good one, and it's kind of on topic with something I've been talking about lately. May I uh, tell you what the question was? Please. Uh, I don't have the question pulled up, so 
Me. Oh, good. <laughs> can so you, how uh, would you like me you... to rectify that for you, buddy? Uh, I have the answer. So let me oh, let me do this perfect. backwards really quick. <laughs> Somebody asked such a good question. Let me find it. Hey, it's Jason here with SGB <laughs> Racing. <on> me. <laughs> 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 D- so Dave, should we expect mm. a VIP experience to Pastrana Land in the near future? I would hope so. That that's one of the goals is to try to move this thing into uh more destination based experiences as well. So uh it it's not out of the realm of possibility. It's uh slow going, but it's gonna happen. Um keep an eye out for us and we're always trying to do some really, really cool stuff. So maybe even a cool trip to hang out with Bryce and do some serious mountain biking. So you never know. Let's do it. Are you coming with us on Sunday? Uh, I feel like I'm going to get goaded into it and I just bought all new mountain bike stuff. So I feel like I got to put it to good use. Will you be so, able to get your mountain bike stuff here? Uh, oh, like I gear you know. mean or? Yeah, I have all my gear with me. I don't know if I can bring my bike out though. That's a, that's the tough part. Well, you uh, there's gotta a bike, be a bike. Local bike shop. They, uh, they'll, they'll probably give us a couple bikes if we need them. Hey guys, I found I the question. So. Let's go. I found the question. I actually got this basically the same exact question from two people. Uh, Daniel Griggs, let's hope I'm saying that right. He uh, sent me a message here. It says, da, da, da. I, I need some advice on how to change my riding style from when I was a kid. I have the worst habit of being on the middle slash heels of my feet, causing my toes to stick outwards. It's so hard for me to change, and I'm used to it now. Uh, Sorry, his grammar on here is not easy to read. It's so hard for me to change, and I'm so used to it. Now my natural position is for them to be stuck out and stand on the backs with the middle backs of my feet. That was a little confusing. What drills should I do, and how do I manage this? It's driving me mad. So I responded to him on there with some advice, um, but I thought this is a question I've been getting a lot, and this is. Honestly, one of the first things I teach at the academy, um, and for a reason. But it's also one of those things, and Jason could probably attest to this. Dave, you could probably attest to this as well. It's one of those things that takes constant conscious thought for you to make any improvement on. And I think people aren't willing to slow down and just take the time to focus on it. Like, I'll just read my message to him back, and then I could go more in depth. I said, I would just do motos at 40% speed with both feet on the pegs at all times. Put your focus on your feet and constantly make sure you're readjusting them when they get out of position. Don't even put your inside foot out for the turns. Turn and eliminate wait, uh, Eliminate as many variables as possible so that you can just focus on your feet. It'll take some time to break the habit. Just don't be afraid to, and I put this in all caps, go slow. Um, darn it, people. Just go slow. And this is one of the first things I always say at the academy too. Like when you're working these drills, when you're focusing on your feet, I posted a picture of it on the academy page of the wear on somebody's boot. Um, If you have some used boots, take a look at the bottom of them, see where the wear is. It'll give you a pretty good sign of where you're riding now. Um, Just go slow. Some of the best things we've had have been the guys that are willing to just slow the heck down and do it right. And on the contrary, some of the worst students we've had have been some of the, doing air quotes here, some of the fastest guys that we've had attend classes. But they're the guys that are maybe riding with a little bit of an ego or aren't willing to take that time to to learn it and to do it right. And I always say, you, you'll you be thanking me down the road. Run. Yeah, and it's hard. I get yeah. it. I mean, anyone that's like further along – in the process it's even harder because you get to the point where you just want to go 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 and you're used to going fast and if you your lap times start dropping because you're figuring something else out i could i understand why that would be frustrating um but darn it's it's so important it really is about is. taking like that step back and and kind of evaluating where you are where you want to be and recognizing your own limits too you know i i think to myself this question reminds me of Friday fails, right? In, there's, they have them. I, I watch them. Uh, oh, like I love the, those. So mo- the moto world, the mountain bike world. And I'm every single time 
I watch any of those, it's like, why is that person trying that? That's all I think to myself. Like, none of them are <laughs> qualified to do it. But that's part of it. It's like recognizing what you should should be doing, and you don't want to put the cart before the horse, right? Yeah, and it, it just remember that anyone at any level should be doing these things, and the guys at the top, top level are focusing on that stuff. And I always say that the guys like Adam Cincerello, Ken Roxon, uh, Chase Sexton, the guys that are just constantly working on the fundamentals and the technique, it becomes very obvious when you watch them on TV, but then they're posting videos of them doing corner track work and oval track and all that type of stuff, one-handed drill. I saw a video of Cooper Webb doing the one-handed drill. Don't be afraid to bring it back to the basics, no matter how fast you are. But yeah, I thought that was a good question. Me, I figured I'd cover it. It reminds me of what Jay Cav said uh, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, so listeners, our, our good buddy, uh, Jay Kavanaugh of Rack Racing, he posted a story. Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago now, but it was just about – it asked his, his followers, look, if you want to get better at cornering, what's preventing you from going and spending an entire day just cornering? How much better do you think you would be at cornering if you spent an entire day just practicing that one skill set? So that's an important lesson too is, is notice where you need to improve and devote and put the time into that, that skill set. That's a really good point. And who's doing that? A very few Not people. Not a lot of people. Because, <laughs> you know, mm. especially the weekend warriors who – and even the more competitive weekend warriors, they, they, they live for the weekends to be on their bike and they want to have the, just an overall fun time. And sometimes they put that above the, de the crucial development. I mean, I think it's, it's important to know it, like, we're guess. all trying to, to improve in some way all the time. And we, we talked about on our last episode with kind of just switching up and doing some workouts that – we don't want to do, but we know will help us. And just changing that mindset and kind of saying, hey, this is going to help me in other ways. It's, it, you almost need to sacrifice. Dude, a little bit I had sometimes. a session with my trainer today, and I can barely sit here on my couch. Uh, sometimes it's so, just like uh, to put your ego aside. Like I'm, I'm at the gym with this trainer who's a girl, and she's having me sit on this glute machine doing like the girliest workout you've ever seen and i'm in there i got a bunch of tattoos like i look like i'm in decent shape i guess and i'm just sitting there doing these hip thrusters on this glute machine but it's like <laughs> I, you know what i'm doing it for a reason because I, that that's my weakness and i'm not afraid to go sit there in the gym and throw some hip thrusters and to hire this trainer to put my ego aside you know what i mean yeah it's like I can that's go actually, all day long and bust out push-ups and do pull-ups, but like I'm good at those. So why am I – that's what I told her when I hired is I'm like, you know, I'm going to the gym three times a week. It's not like this is my main focus, but it's, it's important to me, and I'm doing the same darn thing, and I, I'm just not getting sore anymore, and I'm not making any improvements. I could hop up on the pull-up bar and do pull-ups until you know, I fall asleep, and like it's, that's not doing anything for me anymore. And then she has me do 10 hip thrusters, and I can't sit down. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Hey, that's I actually like this, a good uh, segue. I, I like this topic a lot. Oh, do you like hip well, thrusters, Dave? Here, here's a follow-up. No, I said I like, I like, the, I like the topic because uh, AJ kind of uses me as an example when we go to his classes. Like, I've been riding with AJ since I can't remember how old, and I have a lingering issue that I don't want to talk about because I'm sure AJ will chime in with what my issue is. <laughs> and elbows um elbows <laughs> it's always elbows down and yep. i've been writing like that since i was a kid and to aj's credit we've been working on it for a while and uh going slow and being very mindful of it and i mean i don't like going slow i like to think that i'm a pretty decent b rider and um i'll even dabble in doing some a races here and there but um even like out here when i'm riding I, I i have an ego a little bit and i have to remind myself like hey go slow stand up for a couple motos just focus on that and it's made a huge improvement so uh, i'm living proof that that stuff really matters and once you do swallow the ego be mindful of all the things like these fundamentals that aj teaches it, it does make a difference well that's why i suggest the feet on the pegs uh drill even for the elbows it could be for a lot of things because it'll force you to slow down a little bit and not ride over your head and go through the turn just dragging your foot doing something like that. 
and with that you can focus more on the technique so like dave every school you're at the first when we start working a corner the first three or four times you go through it you're all excited or all worked up and you just like blow through the turn wide open i'm like dave what the and then once we start working the drill and like get you to keep your feet in the pegs and just get you to slow down so you can actually focus on what you're doing it's because you know what to do it's just a matter of applying it exactly but it's not like you're coming into your the turn feet, and you don't know what the heck to do your feet are like your jason did you buzz though. in so hi yeah my, my hands raised the whole time this whole freaking okay. thing it's not okay. working <laughs> Um, okay, your buzzer broke. Yeah. Oh, sorry, but, yeah. we'll get that fixed. But with your with your feet, you have that foundation, and so if you're if you are angling your feet out, um, and not in the balls of your feet, that's also going to affect your knees squeezing the bike, and then if your knees right. aren't squeezing the bike, well then now your upper body is working way too hard to hold on and keep you where it needs to be. So then you're going to drop elbows, and you know your core is going to be gone. So I mean, that's one of the first things to work on, and it's probably one of the most important things because, like I said, it affects everything the rest of the way up. Now, I've also had two ankle surgeries for breaking my ankle and my leg without even crashing simply because my feet were angled out. Mm. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. So Just, just catching uh, them on things? Yeah. So at <clears throat> Bud's Creek in the roller section, um, 2015, I actually jumped through and didn't even crash, but my foot, the tip of my foot caught the the dirt on the... Uh, on that roller by the the roadside where it sweeps back around before the finish line tabletop, and yep. I caught it and it ripped it off, and I ended up tearing all my ligaments in my ankle and breaking my tib and my ankle. Damn, my that's super broke common. My tib. Ooh. So when I snapped that's all my gnarly. ligaments, it came back up and it broke it out of the the tib, and that Ugh. was Oof. another one of, and that's the second time. That was the second time I did it, due to the fact that. Just hitting a corner, like stand-up corners will always be, and it's funny because now when I ride <laughs> and I know I'm going to do a stand-up corner, no matter how fast I'm going, I, I just, my, I'm like overthinking it because I'm like, all right, feet have to be here. All right, bring them back. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm waiting for me to, to break my ankle just because <laughs> I've done it so many times doing that. Well, and that's just a good way bad to. Bad form. Bad form. Yeah. That's also a good way to tear a knee up just by catching your, your foot like that. Especially when you're riding tracks that are, I mean, not forget catching it on something, the side of a track or something like that. When you're riding a really rutted track, you just, it'll get caught in just a everyday rut that you're trying to go through if you don't have them positioned right. People take for granted and it's right. I mean, if you, if your feet are in the right position, everything else will begin to fall in place. If your feet are in the wrong position, it makes it very, very difficult to get everything else in place. So that's why we. I, that's why at class I teach body position first. I spend about forty minutes talking about body position, and what do I start with? I start with feet, and that's when you do the checklist. When you're, oh man, protein shake coming up, Bryce. Again, oh, not my good. Atlanta. Yeah, man. Sorry, <laughs> it's that time of night. Uh, I forgot what I was talking about. Your foundation, your feet. Your come on. First thing you do at class. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. The checklist when you're on the bike, that's the first thing on the checklist. And and the thing, too, is people also, and I know this is difficult for anyone that's trying to make it a habit, you have to remember that it takes constant readjustment. You can't just put your foot in a position and expect it to stay there the entire lap or the entire moto. The, the problem is your foot is constantly going to be adjusting to a position you don't want it to be in, so you have to constantly readjust it. Every single time you take a turn, every time you shift, every time you hit a jump, you have to return your foot right back to that kind of reset position. And for somebody that doesn't have that kind of ingrained so that their subconscious is doing it, that takes a lot of thought. Dude, you know what's a good idea? is what I wish you could have like a metal like shank under the rubber of a boot and have like a magnet in the foot peg. And so you just like, it's almost like a clipless pedal on a bike, but you could just stomp in. And that like is it, a really good idea. You just know exactly where it's going to be. The magnet just grabs it and that's where your position is. That's actually a great idea. Not you heard it here first, folks. Where you're locked in. Right, just right. Like if, if it guides you. Assists you in getting it there. Wow. Yeah. You heard I it like here first, that. folks. I'm patenting that. <laughs> hey, i really like that 
Hey, uh, we we have another question that I want to get to because I told this kid I would we would answer it, and it's a, it, it's a good segue that we we just kind of came from. Um, Are you sure so, it's not the one that we already answered? I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Bryce texts me today <laughs> and sends me a question and goes, "Dude, this is an amazing question," and I read it and I'm like having deja vu, and I'm like, "No, I, I could be going crazy, but I know for a fact we answered this exact question." Somehow I like missed it seven in, in, in the ago. emails. Yeah, it was all it was from the spring. That, you pulled an AJ. I thought for sure that was like, definitely I thought AJ it was moment. Crazy. No, this one is yeah. from tonight. It is specifically in response to our post. Um, it's from okay, Derek great. Wilson. Derek Wilson wants to know what does a typical week look like in terms of workouts with like strength versus cardio, and what are some of your favorite compound movements that help bike skills? Hmm. Uh. So I can give you the answer to like what my week looks like now, like r right this second. Uh, not a whole lot of dirt bike riding. So that's where things get tricky. And that's what I was talking with the trainer about today is it's hard to find that balance. And I think firstly, you have to put in order of importance what matters the most to you, because ultimately you're going to sacrifice strength. Uh, you know, going to the gym after you've done your road bike ride or vice versa, depending on what the important thing is. Um, so currently I've been riding once to one to two times a week on the dirt bike. Not crazy strenuous days, just more so like a technique work or I'm going to do their go do lessons. So I'm just, I'm riding. It's not like the most, I'm not exerting myself too, too much. Um, what I try to do is line up my really hard gym days with my really hard bike ride days. So I just, I make my hard days extremely hard. And I think the key thing is here, the next, the following day has got to be bit, just overly easy. Easy to the point where you, you think you're being lazy. Um, but it's it's so, so important. So on, on my hard days, I usually do, um, my gym session consists of, a ton of core work so like when anytime i'm lifting a weight or doing a cable pull um it's all done one-handed so i do single arm dumbbell chest press single arm overhead chest press with dumbbell um like kind of upright rows single arm so it's all working the core i just started working with this trainer and we're focusing a lot on glutes just because that was a big weakness of mine um pretty much a little bit of everything to be honest with you because I I'd only hit the gym like every third day. I also run to and from the gym, so it's a it's like one point three miles there, it's one point three miles back. Depending on how hard of a day it is, like I'll hit the hit the run decently hard. And then my bike ride on that day will be pretty hard. So twenty to forty miles on the road bike. Um I would say usually average heart rate one fifty which is pretty decent. So how does that, 150 is kind of arbitrary. Like how hard are you exerting yourself? That's pretty high for you. Okay. That's, um, that's like a zone four right. effort. Yeah. So pretty, I mean, it's basically you're putting out an effort that you could barely sustain for an hour, an hour and a half. Um, and I know that sounds like it's, it's harder. It's hard. Like, I think a lot of people would struggle to find that limit and to be able to push themselves for that long at the true speed they can go for an hour and a half because it can feel like forever depending on what type of mindset you're in. Um, but most of those rides I go out and I'm at, I'm in my zone four. So I'm in pretty much, I'm right before threshold. So threshold is like, you know, 172. If I cross that heart rate zone, I basically, it's a countdown starts. I can last, let's just say, I don't know, 10 minutes before like my body explodes and I can't go any further. Yeah. I am right on the verge of that, of crossing that threshold for, you know, an hour, hour and a half, two hours. It's, it's as if like somebody said, go down and do pushups. You do pushups until you cannot do a single pushup more. That's how I time the road bike ride. So when I get done, if I had to do an extra couple miles, like my legs barely are wanting to do it anymore. So I time those days on the hard days. And then on my off days, my off days just consist of 
maybe the same route on the road bike ride, 30, 40 miles, um, just a lot easier. So I'll go out with Luke, uh, one of my buddies, and I know Luke doesn't listen to these, so I can say this. Luke goes slower, so I can go at a slower, uh, lower heart rate and just kind of chill and just spin my legs out, get the blood flowing so that that's my recovery day. Um, what, how about, sure as far as, a lot. How, about, how about as far as, is, is, do you have, uh, what you would call like dirt bike specific or riding specific exercises, maybe something that's just like unorthodox, something you've developed yourself to strengthen this, that, or the other thing. Well, Jason, you have the one, can you explain the one that you show the riders? I don't know if that's necessarily a, a workout, um, but it's done on the medicine ball. Can yeah, you so the, we, we do the one, and this really helps with unlocking the hips and separating your upper body from the lower body when it comes to riding, um, <laughs> which I'll let AJ explain the importance of that side of it on the actual bike. But one of the workouts we do is uh, we use a large Swiss ball or medicine ball, um, and what you do is you kneel on it without you putting your feet on the ground, so you're keeping your balance kneeling on the ball um and the ball wants to shift underneath of you and you have to make minor corrections to keep the ball underneath of you and you on top of the ball instead of you falling off if you try to do this with your upper body or as you know like stiff like a board you'll be too top heavy and you'll weight yourself into the ground whereas if you unlock your hips you can use your hips and below to keep the ball in line and your upper body will stay straight and won't even move at all. Very similar to riding a bike or a dirt bike. Same exact thing. And you could do, so if let's say you, we did this at um, field of dreams. I think we had 15 students out of those 15 students, Jason, how many people were able to actually do it? Do you remember? I would say on like right off the bat without like getting explained the actual process and how to do it, almost no one. Um, <laughs> right. And then once you once you start explaining how to unlock your hips, you'll have two or three people do it and actually be able to stay on it. And it's like a light switch for them. They, they're like, everything he just said now makes sense. And you, you'll really get that feeling of, okay, when he says unlock the hips, this is exactly what he means. Like the pivot point, the, the whole portion of that is just explained and you can actually see it and feel it on the ball because and there's no coincidence that the the best people the people that are able to do this exercise and to balance on the ball are the best riders in the class uh except for with me. the exception except for with me. the exception of you <laughs> 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 you are oddly good at this workout because um, i'm the same shape because as the ball <laughs> but it, it it's very specific and at the gym you could if you got really good at this which once you understand the concept and how to unlock your hips it it, it is easy to stay on there um you can do shoulder workouts you could ha pass a medicine ball with the friend back and forth that would be pretty good hand-eye coordination type thing a um, couple other things i can think of that are a little bit more complex and involve like different aspects is I get on the Indo board, which is just like the basically a skateboard type deal that you have to, how do I describe this? Bryce? It's a balance board. So there, there's basically a roller in the middle of a kind of like a skateboard right. deck and you have to um, keep your balance to, to keep both ends it's off like the ground. shifts back and forth. Yeah. It's, I do it's not recommend telling difficult. anybody to do this unless they're very proficient at balancing anyway because you're out there freaking doing like shoulder like lat raises and, and delt raises on a balance board. That's a surefire way to get everybody who doesn't, who's not used to doing that <laughs> right. very hurt. <laughs> so Right, but maybe careful. start with somebody uh, How about just a balance board? <sighs> What's I think it called? That's a, like you, being on a balance board even, and if you don't have one Put a like a even just like a PVC pipe with a two by four something something that you can um, get used to using like your stabilizer muscles to to get that center of balance. Um, that might even be helpful before you start introducing weights in it into it. Right, I was gonna say have a spotter in front of you just to get the concept of 
it's just a lot of coordination. It's a lot of things going on at once, um, which I think is specific to the sport in itself. You have to have a lot of different things firing at the same time. So as I got good with this, I'm doing kettlebell swings. I'm doing squats. I'm doing uh, with the kettlebell, just overhead type deal. Really difficult when you're trying to balance on. I've never seen anybody else at the gym even be able to balance on the thing. And I'm doing a bunch of different workouts on it. But as a motocross athlete, you have to have good balance. You have to have that coordination. I think that's pretty specific. Um, the, go ahead. The, you didn't buzz in, but I'll let it slide. I'm, I'm not, I'm not Shut up, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the Swiss ball is the same thing. You can do, if you sit on it, you still got to keep your core balance. And then you can do like your shoulder presses with a, with a kettlebell. Um, and if you do it with the weight up top and you hold the handle, so you're actually balancing it on your right. arm. That's well. really hard too. And then you can do that. And then you can also, although that gives me arm work. pump. Does it like when you're actually doing yeah. it or like when you ride? Cause it's like too much grip strength involved. No, when I'm actually doing it, he, what, Jay, what you're talking about is holding the kettlebell with the heavy part up in the air. And you're like balancing it kind of in your hand, right? You want me to bring some to, yeah. You want me to bring some to sleep? Yeah, that gives me arm pump. Uh, definitely bring the uh, the the big ball. Well, what the heck is the that. big ball called? Swiss ball. The definitely Swiss bring ball. that because uh, there's people that are stuck locked that get on that thing, and I, I think that helps the, the light bulb go off. Yeah, a little but we bit. have to do it. We have to do it early though, like right after you do your body positioning. Do that. And then let's have everyone cycle through it, then have them do their drills. And at the end of the day, have them jump on it and see if people can do it better than they did before. Mm, I like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know what? Uh, I, here's Bryce, a, anything else you can think of? Here's specific? another good idea that I've always wanted to do. I never did, even when I was riding a lot, was I always wanted to get a pair of handlebars and adapt it so I can make it into a piece of gym equipment. Like, I always wanted to get the same handlebars. That exists. Oh, does it? It makes sense that it does. Yeah, yeah, my my dad bought it for me. It's like, and it's also on like a balance board type thing that rocks back and forth, so you have to stabilize it. Ah, okay. Yeah, I see. actually do that. So on the indo board, that I do my push ups <laughs> on the indo board. So you're trying to do push ups, but it's also trying to fall to each side at the same time. Yeah, that's actually I don't know why I didn't think of that. That is a really good one to do. I'm trying to think what else. So just balance. Uh, Balance based. Yeah, exercises. a lot of balance stuff. So, like, you could do uh, lun lunges onto a Bosu ball. The Bosu ball is like the half ball with the flat side on the other half. Um, you could do lunges onto that because that's like kind of working ankle stabilization and just balance. Squats um, on top of it. Yeah, you could do, yep, right. You could also do squats on the endo board. Um, squats in general. I think that's enough. I don't, I don't think you. Yeah, I did. Um, I I was working deadlifts are good too. I I was working kettlebell deadlifts with the trainer today, um, because it does it focuses a lot on lower back as well. And lower back is one thing. Like when I have people go do a two lap stand up only drill and they come off, the first thing they complain about is their lower back. Mm -hmm. So be smart about it. I mean, when you ride your dirt bike, if you notice a very obvious weakness, then find a a smart way to to train that weakness, whether it's your lower back or for me, I wasn't noticing my glutes on the dirt bike, but I was starting to notice certain pains and I was noticing, um, just my posture being wrong. So when I was doing squats and doing lunges, my knee was really bowing inward. Um, my, and my hips were tight. There's a lot of things that were kind of sending me that were red flags of something was going wrong. So just try to strengthen your weaknesses, but remember that you gotta put some, you gotta put them in order. So if dirt bike's number one, dirt bike's gotta stay in number one. You have to try to aim to be fresh when you're on the dirt bike. If riding your bicycle is number one, you have to try to aim to be fresh when you're on the bicycle. One thing I struggle with with my riding partner Luke down here, my bicycle riding partner, is every day I ride with him, he had he's just got done with the gym session the 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 previous day, and I'm like Luke. And it's, I understand it's hard when you have a full-time job. I'm lucky to where working out is all I have to do. But he goes to the gym one day and he does CrossFit. So he just blows his load doing the CrossFit. And then next day he's on a road bike ride, hanging on for dear life with me. 
like, Luke, you need to do these both in the same day so that, and I know that's going to be hard, but so you can at least have a day off. And what I didn't realize until today, he told me is that the, the gym is in fact his priority and his recovery days are supposed to be with me on the bicycle, oh, yeah. but they never end up, they never end up yeah, being recovery days. That's because, a joke. And I didn't know that. I felt bad. I, I, I thought that his main focus was the bicycle with me, but no, nope. hmm. bad friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Uh, Dave Drakes, you have anything to add to that? Any, any insight? Oh, uh, um, pretty much what you guys said. Just, um, after doing some of the stand up drills, I think the first class I attended with you, um, my lower back was on fire along with a lot of, uh, not like my hamstrings almost. So I tend to focus on those in the gym a lot. And I definitely notice it helps my riding a lot, especially like when you said, when you make, uh, make riding your priority and sort of start training for your main thing, it, it may, does make a difference as you would expect. So, um, yeah, definitely people, follow along with that. People underestimate the importance of strengthening your legs <laughs> for riding yeah. A, a motocross bike. I mean, if, if you guys didn't notice pretty much most of what I just talked about was were yeah, leg legs. workouts, it was legs in the gym, it's legs on the road bike and it's legs on the mountain bike. Of course there's cardio, ton of cardio involved in that, but we're controlling the bike with our core, with our abs and with our lower body. The mid season from January and even before that, let's just say from, uh, middle of November, December, all the way till Vegas in May. I last year I didn't go to the gym once. I didn't do a single push up. I didn't do a single pull up because I was afraid I was going to get And it showed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So maybe I, maybe I do some push ups and pull ups too. Um, no, but in the past, like, and I I'll really taper down my gym stuff as I get closer to the season too because I do have that fear of getting arm pump and that that upper body physique and and all that it's not really necessary to ride a dirt bike i mean some of it is yes and it uh, it depends on your genetics for me like um i develop quickly upper body some people have weaknesses upper body so hello figure out what your weaknesses are <laughs> hello <laughs> no me my uh i i dude remember even when we were we were lifting heavy when you back when you were in ct in middletown like I, I would be strong, but I would never get muscle. Like, well, I say that I was, I was really? a lot bigger then when I, than I am now. Oh, you were a lot bigger then. I forgot. Ew, yeah, get you, the dude, fuck out of here actually, with that shit. You gave me a car. You used to actually, <laughs> you used to have like nice arms, man. You used to have really nice arms. <laughs> now, now you're just a straight cyclist. Uh, hold on. Let me, uh, I like it though. I'm going to, I'm going to, what the heck? Dave Drake's received a phone call. <laughs> So he got cut off. Oh, what an idiot. Oh, Is that going to mess up our uh, thing? Probably. <clears throat> but anyway. No, we're recording still. We are. Yeah. It says you got cut off. I guarantee you it, it destroys this. Uh, Everything that we've done right, will be well, saved. But... Up until that point. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose we should sign off then. So my off the okay. record, I can, everything I say from here on out is not getting well, recorded? Me. No, 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 Maybe. no! It's still what? being recorded. Hold on, hold on! Don't get, don't get too ahead of yourself. Um, well, that's no fun. Now that now that Dave is cut out, I think that's that's just a good point to end it. We're, I, obviously, we're super pumped. Headed down to Pastrana's in a, in less than a week, and AJ has a. Allie ton. just walked into the room and flicked me off. That's my sign. Oh, oh my gosh! Um, she told me five minutes, and then I didn't come out in five minutes, and she came into the room and flicked me off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're definitely and ready to go. Um, I still have no bikes built. <laughs> yeah, well, get, heck, get on that. Get on mm, that. I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, AJ better bring the car uh, down just in case. Um, so everybody stay tuned for lots to come from, from Straight Rhythm, Pastrana Land, the podcast, follow SGB. Follow the collective experience. Jason's got some awesome stuff going on. It's gonna and he's gonna be basically running the show for Supercross season two. So um thank you Busy to man. Jason. And everybody stay <laughs> tuned for what's in store for Straight Rhythm and Pastrana Land. AJ, you got anything else to say to these fine people? Uh well, thank you, Jason. Really. Because <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, you're uh you've pretty much my babysitter you are my sponsor you're my 
uh, team manager. You've pretty much taken over all roles. And the last hey, to know about Pastrana's house on Sunday, but it's cool. I, I appreciate all the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the Joey Savacci of this Kawasaki program. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like what you did there. Hey, what's your Instagram uh, thing? SGB underscore racing. Okay. Well, <laughs> folks, go follow SGB underscore racing. If nothing else, if you don't even want to get your suspension um, internals done, just send them to Jason so he can put some beautiful coating on there. Because yeah, absolutely. Everyone knows it's all about looking good. And uh, <laughs> you look good, you feel good, work, you feel good, you ride good. It's just it's just adage all this. You time. mean do you want me to you mean to break down the people who normally get coatings? Yes. Ready? Who? The, the vets, twelve o'clock boys? Because they have the money. Yep. The, the, the vets, because yep. they have the money and they just want to work on their bikes. <laughs> and then the C class guys, because they it yeah, just has yeah. to look fast, because then they're fast. You're gonna sit there and yeah, tell me that no a, twelve o'clock boys. The A class guys dipped. can't avoid it. Got their their lowers dip. Uh. <laughs> I actually I uh I I had a, I was mountain biking with a guy two or three days ago. That did he contact you by chance or no? Mm, I mean, maybe people. I oh, I gave him. He was asking. Apparently, he rode dirt bikes in the woods, and I told him about you and gave him your phone number. You know, just really plugging you everywhere I can. No, I really so you're appreciate welcome. it. I, it's it's been working. Um, the uh, we've actually had a lot of people reach out this this week. Actually, some pretty pretty big name people in the industry. Actually, this this whole oh, week yeah, you're has been saying that. pretty good with that. So, um, yeah, we'll be doing a project with uh, David Villman. Actually, outside of the blue, um, I was pretty shocked on that That's one. Sick. And then <laughs> some other people. Um, probably I can't mention yet, but. They uh they reached out this week that we're gonna be doing some stuff for, so yeah it's it's exciting it's it's awesome to see it grow and you know I mean I hope it grows because I I literally spend twenty four hours a day seven days a week on this stuff, so well it'll pay off one it day. will sure. pay off Just all right well, one, I gotta go to bed I need that my one phone's rider. dying <laughs> yeah it won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sorry, uh, sorry to Dave that guys. He, he got cut off, and uh, we will make sure we thank him offline. Um, we'll, we'll keep you guys updated if he is the first black person to. What was that noise? What that is the that? noise of us probably messing this whole thing up. <laughs> I've never heard that noise in my life. All right, we got to go. That's, right, yeah. that's definitely a sign. All right, everybody. Till next time. All right, it was nice knowing you. Adios. Adios.